Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today we are going to be working on step one of making a claw hammer. The first step in this process is I'm taking a piece of inch by one inch or 25 mil by 25 mil, 1045, and I am upsetting it pretty much in one direction. I'm trying to take and get this to be more of a rectangle than it is a square. So that's what we're shooting for here. And so really what we're looking for is something that is about an inch wide by about an inch in a quarter or inch and three eighths uh, in cross section. A reason for this being is we need it to be taller than it is wide in order for us to make that classic drop down that you see in claw hammers when we actually make our set downs for our hammer face itself and we actually make our set downs for the uh, claw. So I'm just continuing to upset this piece here. Now I'm trying to get used to these hammer making tongs or pickup tongs that everybody so likes to use but I'm not, obviously I'm not proficient with them and they're definitely not my choice, but I figured I'd try to use them for the video and see how it how it turned out. All in all, it wasn't too bad. So the jury's still out on it. We'll leave it to operator error. So yeah, so just planishing down the surface. We want this, like I said, to be a rectangle. Now that I got it to a rectangular shape, I'm going to go ahead and use my slot punch. And I already pre-marked this at a red heat. Turning it in for in. And we're just going to drive this through. The reason for turning it in for end on making any sort of hammer or claw hammer is so this way if there's any sort of bend or distortion or uneven grind in the slot punch itself that it will get corrected every so many blows. So this way you can shoot true straight down the center of the bar. This is especially important whenever you have a bar where you're taking and punching through the thin side of the bar. That means not the thick side. So if you will, whenever you're punching on the edge of something. So in this case, the one inch side versus the inch and a quarter. If I were to lay this thing flat, it would be wider than what it is right now. So here I'm lubricating my punch. That is just some like really old vegetable oil that has been used like forever and a day and there's some paraffin wax in it. So some vegetable oil and paraffin wax mix. And that's really just more or less to cool the punch than to prevent sticking or anything like that. But as you can see, it's always beneficial when you can have the right tools for the job. And so I struggled with this little bit here for a moment, but it's okay. We'll get it figured out. So now I'm going to go ahead and mark the back. I had already got all the way through for the most part. And this is going to take a couple heats to do this, but really we're just trying to lay this out cold right now. And we'll go ahead and get it hot again and, and go at it again to get it punched. So after we get it punched and get the slug punched out of it, now we're going to take and drift it open. Now I like to drift my hammer eyes round first. I find that this helps keep a uniform wall thickness all the way through the piece. And it's a nice easy way of creating an oval hole. I like to drift this open. I, I like to get about one inch or so around. Uh, dropping it's a, kind of a part of the deal here. Don't let your side walls get too cold on you. And you just want to drift as squarely as you can through the piece. There we go. So now we're just going to tap it out. Hit the hammer faces so this way it'll help release the drift. There we go. 
and we'll cool the drift down. So that's going to be it for this video. This is where I'm going to leave it for today. This is the first stage. Be sure to check in on part two and uh, we'll start the call bit. Thanks for watching.